My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome back to Transport Fever 2. Uh, start this episode, sat outside the interchange train station we have constructed at Gillingham, just as one of our northern mainline trains arrives on platform to unload a load of passengers and hopefully pick up a load more to take them off towards Petersfield and Haywood. We also have one of our Flying Scotsman shuttle services from either Derby, sorry, from either Stockton or Boston arriving alongside as well. So that's nice timing to get a good look at the Flying Scotsman as he comes on platform there. Now the reason I focused on the main line on the introduction wasn't just because that was the first train I saw when we started, but I've been looking at the finances for that train and it's losing money hand over fist. If I bring up the information window there and get the main line, the northern main line information window open, we can see since we electrified the train, it's been running at a fairly substantial loss, which is a little bit of a concern. And I think the reason is because of the locomotive that we have assigned to the train, which is the MILW electric train, which while being very powerful and very fast, it's also very expensive. So my plan is to swap that locomotive out and possibly even the carriages as we just unlocked new carriages at the end of the last episode. I think it was the Streamline New Mexico carriage that we unlocked. We also unlocked the 442, I think it's a 442 Hiawatha. Let's just quickly check that. Yes it is. And we also unlocked the Class A4 which is I believe the Mallard. Yes it is, which actually still holds the world speed record for a steam locomotive, which is quite interesting. So it may be worth swapping this train for something a little bit cheaper to run. So at the minute, as I said, we were, we were using the MILW, which costs us 2 million per year. And we were also using the heavyweight parlor, which costs us, how much does that cost per year? Let's have a quick look. 363,000 per year so if we can get something cheaper for example the streamline new mexico which is almost 100,000 pounds per year cheaper to run however it is a smaller capacity so that's something we have to trade off there because you can't have everything your own way but we could run it like that that would increase the capacity by 11 and then if we just decide what locomotive we'd like to assign to this instead of the milw I guess it's either going to be the one of the new Hiawathas or the Class A4. How would that do? So it is going to be slower in terms of acceleration by quite a distance. However, it's going to be a lot cheaper to run. That only costs us 1.2 million per year. How much is the Hiawatha? 1.9. So I think we might just go for the Class A4 and have this as our new mainline, northern mainline train instead of the configuration that we had before and that should stem the tide so to speak in terms of how much it's costing us to run per year and should turn it profitable in theory i think it's worth doing just for the fact we get to see the mallard on the map another very famous steam engine from history we already have the flying scotsman to so have the mallard as well wouldn't be a bad thing we've got one too many there of course it may also be worth just having slightly fewer coaches or click the wrong one there there we go uh, slightly fewer coaches for a faster service and if we just check that if we have uh, 126 capacity although it doesn't really that makes negligible difference if I'm perfectly honest yeah I can live with the difference there by having the increased capacity so we'll go for that that's gonna cost us 107 million to swap all those out at the minute, our earnings look quite scary. That's just because of all the new trains and upgrades that we've been doing recently. So we've got a lot of uh, we've had a lot of expenditure in the form of investment. It's not, I'd hope and I believe, it's not the fact that our company itself, on a regular day-to-day -day basis, if you know what I mean, is running at a loss. But for now, we'll see how we get on with this. Just need to turn off the expenditure floating numbers there we'll have a look at this mallard oh my life that's that's an impressive looking train it's even got the mallard nameplate on the side 
I don't think this one's going to break any speed records like it did in real life. However, having it on the map is a pleasing thing. It does. It's a very sleek, very aerodynamic, very aesthetically pleasing train to have. So having him run the line is not going to do us any harm at all. And if we also get the added bonus of him not costing as much to run per year as the MILW was, then that's also an added bonus. So it could be a little bit of a two birds with one stone sort of scenario here by assigning the mallard to the line. I'm just going to try and jump out in front of him, so to speak, so we can have a, a nice look as he travels down the line towards Bridport. Let's have a look. There we go, yes. A very, very beautiful locomotive and one that I am very pleased to have as part of our network. So moving on then, at the minute I'm reluctant to do too much just because of the high expenditure that we've been witnessing. So one thing I was going to do and I would like to do, and it's been annoying me for some time now, is cover the grass that shows up between the ballast on our lines. It just doesn't make sense, especially when these lines are very busy. There should be no grass growing between the tracks. So, from time to time, I'm just gonna get the paint tool out, get the ballast paint tool, and just quickly run over this grass here and hide it and get rid of it. Just to make things look a bit more realistic, if you know what I mean. In fact, I'll fill in some ballast there between these two lines on the uh, on the, the void space, the gap between the two tracks like that it just makes it look a little bit more realistic because there's no way as I said you'd have grass especially between the two parallel tracks you'd have no grass growing there at all in reality it wouldn't have a chance to the, uh, the constant passing of the trains would diminish any grass growth so just doing this just tidies it up a little bit makes it look a bit more pleasing and a bit more like I said a bit more realistic Likewise, in the station, we have grass growing between all the tracks in the station, so we want to get rid of that as well. I'm just going to take a few moments here just to get rid of as much as I can. I'm not going to do the entire network, because that would fill an entire episode, and it wouldn't be the most riveting of viewing for you guys. So, I'm just going to do little bits here and there, just while I'm waiting for the money situation to settle down, because I don't want to run us too deep into the hole. And then find ourselves stuck for any future expansion so this just gives time for those expenses that we've paid for over the past couple of years to drop off our accounts accounting period I should say yeah drop off the accounting period and then this earnings number here should be a fair reflection on the current state of affairs for our business our transport business I'm just going to do this as far as the next station, which I believe is Petersfield. And I think we're getting close now. Here's the junction off towards Haywood, down by the river. So we are getting close. Here's one of our Haywood Express trains just arriving on platform. I say express, it's a shuttle service. It is an express line. That's another service that is likely running at a loss because of the MLIW that we have assigned. So that's another one that may be worth swapping out. If we just verify that. Yes, the Haywood to Petersfield shuttle service. To, to tell you what, that's not as bad as I feared. It breaks even or is a little bit negative, but sometimes it does make quite a decent profit as well. However, we could maximise the profits there by swapping the MLIW sorry, M-I-L-W, for a cheaper to run locomotive. But given our money situation, don't really want to be doing that just yet. So what I think I might do at this point is just pause the video recording, pause the date progression, set the game acceleration to four times speed, and let some money build up and let this return to some sort of true reflection as to where we currently stand and then start making these changes to the other lines that are currently 
running at a loss. So I'll do that, so I'll pause it now and we'll pick it back up in hopefully not too distant future, but nothing much will have changed in the game, although I probably will go ahead during the pause period and just fill in some of the grass that we have between our tracks. So I'll see you in a second. Okay guys, so I've picked it back up again. I let it run for about 10 minutes. As you can see, our earnings has returned to something a little bit more pleasing to look at. I also just had a quick look before I picked it back up at the Northern Main Line and had a look what sort of effect running the Mallard and the Streamline New Mexico coaches is having. And as we can see, the amount it costs to run this service per year has now dropped off quite nicely and it gives this line a much greater chance of being profitable, which is obviously the name of the game. Now, before I had to do the pause there, one thing I was about to look at was the Haywood to Petersfield shuttle service and seeing how that is doing. Now, it's not too bad. Sometimes it's profitable. Sometimes it just about breaks even. even. Sometimes it loses a little bit of money. However, given that we've just had a new train unlock obviously we had the Hiawatha we had the A4 we've also had a new rail bus so I'm questioning whether it's worth having a rail bus run this unit uh, run this line the CLE 24 rotor file I believe that's what how you would say that I'm not quite sure this would make sense it is a shuttle sort of service and this would make it a shuttle sort of train as well at the minute we have 70 capacity so if we had a chain of four of them that would only cost us 10 million per vehicle to purchase and they only cost each unit costs just uh, 450,000 a year as well so it's gonna be cheaper to run it's gonna be a little bit faster and we have decent acceleration as well looking at that and given that each time we add a new unit it increases the power it's not like your usual system where adding more gives you less. It seems that this time you add more and things improve-ish. Let me have a look. So top speed is in 69 seconds with that many. If we just drop one off, it's... Yeah, okay, so it, it doesn't really change it too badly, I suppose. So is it worth having this sort of service as a commuter service? I think so. It's going to be cheaper to run. You can also increase the capacity by doing this. We're talking it to 120 per vehicle. And it's only going to cost us just under 30 million pounds to modify this. So let's go ahead and do that. They're already coloured red, but we'll get them the correct shade of red for the line. And then we can go ahead and have a quick look at these and see how they look. They look a bit strange being tailed together like that, I think. But I think we can suspend disbelief every once in a while and have these run in the line and we'll see how they do in terms of financial reporting for us or financial results oh jesus i did not realize we had that many people waiting here okay we're gonna need more of these then so at the minute we have two we're gonna have to double it i don't think we could really justify having more than four of these running this line because it's only a short shuttle service however what we could do to try and alleviate some of this congestion on this train station here is put in a motorway sort of connection or an a road connection between haywood and petersfield and run a tram service along that little line that could be something that's worth doing and it would be fairly cheap to do as well which is obviously always a bonus so if we use a large country road we'll in fact I might even put an electric tram line on there you know similar to what we did down here between Weybridge and Quintrell Downs and then we could have a tram service running between the two so rather than losing money and everybody using their own vehicles to get between the two cities, we still make some money from transporting them and it gives them an alternate, a viable alternative option to get over to Petersfield. Perhaps that's the 
that's not that wouldn't be a bad idea so to that end the first thing i'm going to do is not put the road in but actually put a bus tram station in just at the end of P uh, haywood over here like this just on the outskirts of town and this could be the interchange for this new line that we're going to set up and then the road will run out this way round the farm and we'll connect it in possibly up here this looks like a decent natural connection point and then we can run it uh, or we can run a tram or a bus service from the exchange here into Petersfield and even up to the train station at Petersfield as well and it's probably worth at this point looking how crowded these bus stops are at the train station it's probably worth putting a bus station up here as well and replacing these bus stops with a higher capacity option if you know what I mean so let's go ahead and get that done nice and quickly we need to configure this so we have an exit coming out of the other way and then we want to put in the road that's not a road that's a train line well done electric tram line we'll have a bus lane as well because why not and we'll have yeah we'll keep it as a four lane road now we are going to have to go would this road fit under that bridge there without causing too many issues there's only one way to find out and that's to go ahead and test so let's head a little bit straight and then curve towards the train line bridge there and let's see if we can get underneath we can it looks pretty glorious if i'm honest so that's that done let's take it back a little bit because we're now going to either have a cutting or a bridge sorry a tunnel through this little hill here it's going to be a bridge that's not a bridge well done that's a tunnel I uh, don't like the fact it's given a little opening there that just looks a bit strange there we go stretch it out we'll have quite a long tunnel that can be the Petersfield tunnel we'll name it it's a shame you can't actually change the names of the bridges at least I don't think you can I might be thinking of city skylines where that's a thing and then we want to come out here get there this is gonna be quite a tight radius but that's okay doesn't look too bad no it's fine now if we switch to the town roads and is this this could theoretically be the main street it's roughly central and it does go through the CBD well, I'm assuming that's a central business district. They could all be residential buildings. I'm not sure. But aesthetically, it looks like the central business district. So that's what I'm calling it. And then we shall, yes, like I said, we'll switch to a large street. This is going to cost an absolute fortune to do. Because we're going to have to demolish a lot of residential and business buildings here. And I'm going to pause it at this point. So they don't no now we should be okay and then we'll just run it straight down through the center it's gonna completely destroy the rather lovely skyline that petersfield had developed for itself but given time they will rebuild so that's okay and then we want to run this main road perhaps up this way towards the train station like so then we'll run it out to there as well can we will we be able to squeeze no we can't because it's going to collide with the train station which is okay we can instead drop down to this size which is a medium street and then after this junction perhaps we switch back up to the large although just test it down here will the large street clash with the depot yes it will so the entirety of this run must be upgraded to include a bus lane on the road as well don't know why it needs a bus lane when it's only a two lane street but there we go we've got one anyway now i did say it's probably worth considering putting in a proper passenger exchange over here so we shall do that but first i want to upgrade some of these small roads here like this because it looks a bit strange having that many small capacity roads in such a built up area. In the residential zone it kind of makes sense, you know, a nice quiet suburban street. However, through 
the centre of town. It doesn't quite sit right with me. It's just personal taste, I know, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's going to cost an absolute fortune. And we are going to completely wreck Petersfield by doing this. However, they do rebuild pretty promptly. So it's not the end of the world. But there we go. That's looking a little better to get these two done as well. It makes the roads faster, higher capacity as well. So it's well worth doing, especially if we're having buses, trams or vehicle vehicles, trucks running down here. Now, where shall we squeeze in the passenger exchange in this area? I'm going to say here. We will have to get rid of quite a large number of these industrial buildings. So we'll go ahead and do that. We will pause it at this time because they will build back pretty quickly if we don't. Let's get rid of those bushes and scenery. Kill the planet. And then we want to get the bus stroke tram station. We'll have it for platform. We will have it electrified and we'll have it 30 meters. And we'll have it just there like so that provides a connection to this train station which is what we're looking for and then i'm going to extend the size of the passenger platforms here like that and then put the second street access in on the other side like so and then we're just going to have to electrify this little stretch of road and this little stretch of road but that's easily done electric and keep for that option there like so there we go so what we can do now is the buses and trams that stop here, we can switch them over to this new configuration. So bus service 01, let's manage the line. So you're already coming this way. So Park Road is a first stop. So therefore, after Queen's Way, if you instead go to here, yes, that's what we want, and then get rid of Park Road. I think the batteries might have just no they didn't I thought the batteries had died in my mouse but they haven't there we go we'll set some waypoints up to make sure they don't cross over themselves and this have a nice clean exit from this so that's that one done what else do we have here bus service 02 which way are you coming from you're coming from this way and then heading back down that way so again if you perhaps go to this platform up here and again you're after green lane you've already gone the correct way out or the way I intended you to leave so that's good don't need to do anything different there but we'll get rid of Park Road and that's gonna then switch you back to some crazy loop system but that's okay and then we have the two metros and they're gonna obviously share these well they're gonna use these platforms down here so manage the line after the Avenue you're coming in here now and get rid of Park Road See, you've done the correct thing that's what I wanted you to do perfect and then the last one, obviously Metro 02, manage the line. After Green Lane, you're now coming here and getting rid of Park Road. Again, you've gone a bit over and above yourself there, which is not what I had in mind, but a few waypoints here will alleviate that problem. I'm just gonna cover all bases and have them like this. So we've got every single waypoint option available to us. Now let's have a look at the lines here. Just get rid of, get rid, yeah, that's what one, the only ones that we're interested in. So bus service 01, you are the dark purple. So you're coming up to this platform and then looping around that way. So what we need to do for you is after Petersfield halt, you want to hit that waypoint and then carry on. Perfect. Bus service 02. Which way are you heading out? You head down that way as well. So you want to hit the same waypoint like that. Yes, that's fine. And then the last one is the lighter shade of the blue. Which you're coming in this way. Coming around there. And then heading out that way. Okay. How can we finagle you what if you hit sorry after green lane if you go there then you come in but then you go loopy loop down there so then after that after petersfield halt if you then come out onto this waypoint 
You cross over a bit there, but that's okay. It keeps things free flowing in the exchange, which is the bigger concern for me. We'll rename this to Petersfield Exchange. All the hordes of people will now make their way over to the newly constructed tram and bus station, which is good to see. That's what we wanted them to do. Now, before they start rebuilding and block up this space here, one thing I wanted to add was a fourth, no, a fifth passenger stop here. Because I might bring the line from Haywood into here as well. Obviously, it will stop at a couple of, maybe one or two tram stations in Petersfield on its way before heading back out. That's the plan. Yes, that'll work, that'll work. Okay, so that's that taken care of. This is all electrified, I believe. Yes, it is. Let's just check the exchange here is also electrified. Yes, it is, which is excellent. Let's also electrify the streets actually inside of Haywood as well. No bus lane because they're only two lane streets. So bus lane doesn't make the most sense. And then this tram, after dropping off here, it can come this way, past the station. It's going to be a very busy service in that case, but that's okay. Out this way, we'll upgrade that to a bigger capacity road. And then back down the way down here. And then back out to the exchange. That should work for me. I don't foresee any problems there. What do we have here? The PPR Class CG1, which is another electric train. We can have a look at that in a few moments and see if there's anywhere we can make use of it. But for now, we need to get this line set up, which means adding a few extra bus tram stops in Haywood itself. Now, this is just going to be a loop service, I think. So we'll have it just on the one side of the road. We'll have him stop there. You can use that st uh, that bus stop there. We'll have one up here. We'll have one there. We won't use that one. Instead, we'll come down to here. And then to there. And then back in. And then out towards Petersfield. Oh, I wonder what that black route was there. But obviously, it's our airline. So let's get this started, shall we? So if we say this is the home station... What colour do we want? We already have a green here. Let's have perhaps this sort of... No, we already have a quite a dark blue as well. We have a green. Should we have yellow? We'll have yellow. Do we have anything yellow up here? What's going to clash? No, we do not. So that's a good colour. Keeps it nice and easily identifiable. So you're going to come this way. I said you're going to skip... No, you're going to hit that one. You're going to skip this one and carry on down here. Into Haywood South. We'll rename that at some point. And then you can hit that one. Are you, are you only on the one side of the road? No, but you've just decided to pick that. What the hell? Didn't want to do that. Uh, that's right, yeah. Haywood, then you come to that one. We'll skip that stop. We'll hit this one. We'll skip that one. We'll hit this one. And then you want to... Why have you selected all of the wrong platforms? Why would you do that? That does not make any sense to me. What's, what, what stop is this? Number 9. So number 10. I've done it again. It just keeps opening the industry manager. Wish it wouldn't do that. Yes, and then if you can come in... Okay, I'm going to have to dance these around a bit because ideally this one would come into one of these two platforms here so we can change them over in a few moments. So you want to go onto platform number one and then you're going to come out that way, hit that stop again, hit that stop again, head on out and then come back into here. Like that. Perfect. So let's sort this out because it's doing all the wrong things here. So on its way out, it wants to hit one of these two platforms. So that's stop number seven. That's better. And we'll call this Haywood Exchange. 
like so. And we needed to also do a bit of line management or platform management, I should say, up here because it was being a bit weird. Oh, it wasn't, but they were sharing when they really shouldn't be. So what we'll do is Metro 2, yes. Metro 2, Just get rid of those waypoints that we assigned. If I can click them, there we go. And then instead of that, if you hit platform number 5, and that keeps you lovely and tidy, perfect. No waypoint action needed for you, sir. Well done. So that's that. Do we have a tram depot with full access? Yes, this one here will be an unbroken access line. So what do we have? We have the Type T1, or we have the DL3000 VIT, which is horrendous. So we'll just not use that one at all. I imagine this is going to be quite busy, so we'll go for... 10 of these straight off the bat colour them yellow get the maintenance set and put them on that line which is line 1 so we need to rename the line as well and this can be the Haywood Petersfield no the Intercity Metro Haywood Petersfield there we go excellent one thing I also want to do is Put a how many bus lines do we have here we have two put a third bus service in to get people down here as well so they don't have to pick up this tram from in town they can do a change over so we'll do that so we're gonna have one one two one two and then you can come up this way for some coverage up here and then you can go up that way and then you can come up this way down this street here to this one across to here down to here and then there and then you can turn around in the exchange that's okay so let's get that set up them set up there's gonna be two of them so which day it's this way wasn't it yes 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 I think I'm hitting all the right stops here yes that's right that's right yep yeah there we go did I hit all the stops I just put in? I believe so. And this is bus service 03 for Haywood. And then we want to do the same but in reverse. In fact, we've missed this stop out, but we can quickly add that in at the end. That's no problem. And this is bus service 04 for Haywood. Perfect. So, which, yes, it was the get the line manager bus service three after Manchester Road. You need to come into here. There you go. Now, they have to cross over because they, they're going back out the same way they came in, but that's okay. Let's get you some buses for those. Passenger buses, the Fuso B46, and you can have six per line. Eight per line. Yeah, we'll go for eight per line. Because I imagine it's going to be quite busy. And you are... Let's get the two shades of green there. A dark green and a light sort of green. I've selected nine instead of eight. That's better. Which one did I think it was those two? They look about right to me. So that's bus service 03. Bus service 04. And we'll see what sort of impact that has on encouraging some of these passengers to instead opt to take the in-city metro. Now, one thing that, in fact, it may be worthwhile doing. Yes, I think instead of having this metro go all the way around here, I might just have it come to here and then head straight back. Or... What I might do is configure this, add a platform either side, get it the same size as the others, and have a true express metro that literally just goes from the Haywood Exchange, down the road we laid in, and into... Maybe if we put a full passenger station somewhere in the centre of town, and that will literally be all it does from one exchange to the other exchange, although we could... Although we are using up all the platforms, we don't have much space left to expand this one. So we might need to, yes, actually put in a second 
passenger station in Petersfield to accomplish that. But that's not something we have to concern ourselves with right now. Hopefully Petersfield has started to rebuild after its upgrade of roads. Kind of. There are still some green spaces they can rebuild onto. I am sure that given time they will do just that. Now one of the things we did unlock as well at the end of the last episode was new trucks. We got the Opal Blitzers. I do believe they are an improvement on the Ford Model 77s. So if we just open our Vehicle Manager, select Road Lines and Depots only, and work our way through. So these guys either are all for bricks and stone. So let's have a look here. So you would need that one. Do that. And we'll just very quickly upgrade all of our truck lines. Shouldn't take too long. And that's all of our trucks now upgraded as well. Let's have a look at them, shall we? Don't look too bad at all, do they? He's just coming in to pick up some tools. I had to check his colour there, so I knew. Although I could have looked at the bottom of the screen where it clearly identifies what he's running and what he picks up but never mind so i think we are almost at a wrap-up point for this episode almost i say i'm just gonna have a quick scout over the map see if there's anything that urgently requires our attention you're still how much money are you making this little ferry service profitable every year excellent Things look okay here, although we do have a busy platform, which is the in-city bus. Perhaps adding more vehicles onto that wouldn't be a bad idea. We'll go for 12. Get the maintenance set up. Just to get some people moving that little bit faster. In fact, are you profitable? Like you should be, given... Yeah, that's pretty profitable. Happy enough with that. Ulverston is busy. The bus service is... Oh, we only have... Oh, Ulverston's public transport has been grossly neglected. Let's add another three on to take that to eight. In fact, Ulverston could justify a second bus route as well, to be fair. How are we doing up here? Okay, so far. You're just leaving with a full load. Have you made a drop-off yet? You have, and you're profitable when you do, which is excellent. So I think overall, that line is profitable if you judge it over a couple of years. How are we doing down here? Things are looking pretty good here as well. What I am going to do, because I've given the amount of trucks we have in and out of here, there's a chance at some point in the future... We may start having trucks waiting on each other and not able to pass each other and getting stuck like we had outside of the goods factory in Morley. So I'm just going to quickly modify all of these lines so that they don't wait until full. They just take whatever is available. So they're in and out nice and quick. The grain can wait till full because we've always got a full load of grain there because the farm is just next door so that's okay. How are we doing here? And again, I'll probably do the same thing with these lines. And I'll let them run on regardless of how much cargo they pick up when they arrive. We have a bit of backlog here as the trucks try and space themselves out a bit. How are we doing in Derby? The Western Main Line is very busy. Is it profitable? Yes, it is probably turn our attention to that in the next episode because we don't have a lot of money to play with at the moment so swapping out four trains I don't think we could afford it do we need more buses you have plenty of buses perhaps it's time Derby got a tram system could be something to look at in the next episode down here things looking good that's fine Gillingham's looking okay the train station's busy but it isn't overcrowded which is the main thing Likewise at Petersfield, it's not technically overcrowded. How is this shuttle service doing since we added new trains? 
again, either profitable or just about breaking even, so I can live with that, as long as it's not excessively in the negative. Speaking of which, how is our northern main line, now that we've added the Mallard and got rid of the high cost train that we had previously? Pretty, that's it's better, it's not perfect, but it's better, a lot better than it was, so I can live with that. The other thing I wanted to check before we called it a day was how our new setup over here is getting on after we changed from this setup to a direct line to the goods factory. Things are looking pretty good. He's just made a delivery. Uh, you are profitable overall, even if you're not profitable every year. You could probably be better served not waiting until full if I'm honest so we'll do that so manage the line and just take whatever's available to you sometimes you might be running quite empty but it just keeps things flowing down here things are okay how are we doing down here looking okay is it worth getting a train service to replace this road shunting service Possibly. Could be an option. Stokes looking okay. Ooh, click the depot. How's our shuttle service with the Zephyr doing? Lovely. You are nice and profitable almost every year, which is very pleasing. And lastly, I think, yeah, we'll call it lastly. How's Ripley doing? You're not making much money, if any, that's okay. You're still only a small city, so there's not going to be much uptake or demand. And yes, after that quick check up on a few tweaks that we'd made in the not too distant past, I think this is a, a good place to call an end to this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think it was quite a productive episode. Obviously, the major change we did make today was adding the in-city metro between Haywood and Petersfield in an attempt to tackle the amount of people that are trying to use the shuttle service. As we can see already, that number has dropped, whether that's because we added two extra trains to the line or because people are instead opting to take the metro, I'm not sure. One way to check is to look at the metro and check the charts. There you go. But 223 transported already, so there has been a good demand and a good uptake straight off the bat, which is excellent. So yes, in the next episode, probably put a few metro station uh, metro lines in. Derby could definitely do with a metro. Ulverstone could probably do with a second bus service, if not a metro. It's still quite a small city. And then we'll let some funds build up. In fact, what I'll probably do is keep the game running between episodes with the date paused let some money accumulate and then we can upgrade some of the trains because the western main line for Derby, Macclesfield and Ulverston isn't meeting demand and could probably do with modernization so we can have a look at that but for that we will need quite a bit of money so I'll let some build up off camera rather than having to put another pause in as I had to in this episode so yes guys, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving a like or dropping a comment or hitting that subscribe button to subscribe to the channel for future Transport Fever 2 content. I am at the minute casting half a mind forward to the next series for Transport Fever 2 and I do have something in mind. However, that is probably a decent way off at this point so it's not something that's going to be happening imminently I do think this map still has quite a bit of life left in it after all we've still got quite a few cities that have been neglected in terms of getting their goods into them to help them grow so I'd like to get that done before I even truly consider calling it a day with this Coventry map but yes, in the meantime, as always guys, all that remains for me to say is take care of yourselves. Tata for now.